Stephen A., is T Mac right? Is the NBA watered down? No, it is not. He's wrong. Um, like I was joking about yesterday, T Mac is my man. We go back a long ways. I'm used to educating him about certain things, and this is one of them. Uh, T Mac was a guy that averaged better than 24 points per game. He was no scrub. He was a star in this league for a while. He was a big time player at one point. Uh, but the reality is, is that you got you. He's one of those guys. He's not from the older, older generation, but he's he's old enough where he appreciates a more physical brand of basketball. Uh, rule changes that didn't facilitate more offense. Having to do the things that he did in an era where the level of physicality was still allowed to some degree, I can appreciate where he's coming from. He wasn't around when it was in the early '90s and late '80s when it was really, really bad physically. But at the same time, in 2000 and beyond. Uh, Certainly, there was some physicality that still existed. So I get, I would get his point if he was bringing that up in terms of watered down, a watered down game. But he said watered down players, and he is totally wrong. Let me tell you something right now. Kevin Durant can average 30 in any era. Steph Curry, regardless of how physical the game is not compared to what it was, could average 25 to 30 in any era. LeBron James could do what he do and what he has done in any era. Dwayne Wade would adjust it in any era. Russell Westbrook would have adjusted in any era. CP3 would have been CP3 in any era. There are plenty of guys in this league that are stars, that are comparable to the stars that existed in Tracy McGrady's era. And so when he says what he says, I, I think that he's wrong because I don't think it was his intent at all to come across as disrespectful. I certainly am not accusing my man T. Mac of that uh, because he wouldn't do that. He's, 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 not, he's not that kind of dude. But I would tell you that I think that you've got guys that look at today's game, how soft the game is called what you're allowed to get with on offense, how strapped opposing defenders and defenses actually are. And they harbor such resentment towards the game because of what these guys are allowed to do and what has been facilitated for them. But what wasn't facilitated for the Tracy McGrady's and the Allen Iversons and the Vince Carter's and others and Kobe and them back in the day that I think Comments like this emanate from that, but it doesn't make it accurate. It makes it understandable yep. why they would say it, but it doesn't make it accurate. He's not accurate here. It is a watered down game. He didn't say that. He said watered down talent. Yep, he did. Steph Curry is no watered down talent. Steph Curry, with that marksmanship, could be on any team in any era. That back in the day, Skip, they just would have surrounded him yep. with goons to protect him. I agree. They don't have to do that now because the game, the rules have changed. In no way should we even think about diminishing the achievement of Steph Curry's unanimous MVP. In no way, Not shape, or form. Not at all. You know and I know, and you're with me on this, I'm the biggest Michael Jordan fan you will ever find. Do I think Steph Curry is better than Michael Jordan? I do not. I'm sorry, I don't. Can I see, is, is it at least debatable that the star quality of Michael Jordan's prime years in the NBA was a little above today's star quality? I guess it's debatable, but the more I think about it, it's, it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. You know, in, in his prime, Mike, Michael's going up against a Carl Malone, Kim Olajuwon, Drexler, Barkley, Magic, Shaq, who else am I forgetting? David Robinson, okay? But, but now you just listed off all those guys, starting with James Harden, who won the players MVP a year ago, and the two guys in Oklahoma City, and Chris Paul, and then if we just go back a couple of years to, to a healthier Derrick Rose, and a healthier, younger Tony Parker, and Dwight Howard in his prime defensively, wow, I, I don't know, it's, it's pretty close, and yet, Steph Curry has eclipsed his competition. He has revolutionized the game of basketball. He has turned it upside down to the point that a slender six foot three point guard is dominating the game of basketball at the highest level as a scorer, not a facilitator. He's a scorer and he's an unstoppable scorer who can get you 40 like that. He can get you 17 in overtime like that even coming back from injury without his conditioning, a little rusty, 17 like that in overtime. Wow, 
That's revolutionary to me, so I'm glad you're with me on this. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I get the, the sort of the argument. At least it's mildly debatable. But what's not debatable is that Steph Curry is still head and shoulders above still a very strong field of competitors and stars in this league. The, the one thing that I will never allow any player, former player especially, to do is to belittle in any way today's players these brothers can play yes sir it's just that it's a new game and if it's and, and it's robbed the defenses of being able to play a physical brand of basketball to neutralize guys but from a skill set perspective the stars in this league the true stars in the nba can play in any era mm -hmm. any era it's just who you would surround them with. Yesterday on the radio, I brought up Patrick Ewan. Well, why nobody touched Patrick Ewan? Because he had Oakley and Anthony Mason, God rest his soul, and prior to that, Ken Bannister, Xavier McDaniel around him. Why did nobody touch Michael Jordan earlier on? Skip, you know this. When Charles Oakley was there, what was going to happen if you touched uh, uh, Charles, uh, Michael Jordan? Mm -hmm. You know, they, he'll take a bullet for Michael Jordan. Now, you look at the bad boy Pistons, Isaiah Thomas. I'm sorry, Rick Mahorn. Bill Lambeer, yep. Dennis Rodman, James Edwards. I mean, he, he, Mark, Mark, Mark Aguirre mm -hmm. and Adrian Danley. They weren't punks. I mean, look, and Joe Dumas. I mean, and Vinny the Microwave Johnson. You, you, you knew not to touch. And John Sally, of course, you knew not to touch yep. Isaiah Thomas. Or it's going to be a problem. Yep. It's going to be a problem. I agree. That's all I'm trying to say. And, and by you the way, we, yeah. we neglected to mention one big star of today's league, LaMarcus Aldridge, just for the record. Just had to throw that in. We'll see. Will he yeah. show up Thursday night? We'll I don't see. know. L.A., live up yeah. to those initials. I hope so. I like him. I mean, he's a good guy. I'm rooting for him. Yeah. But he's got to show up in a moment like this. Yeah. He's got to show up. Got to show yep. up. Got to. All right. Meanwhile, Kenny Smith is considering a job change, but does Skip and Stephen A. think it's a good idea? We'll tell you that when we come back. So a source telling our Calvin Watkins that the Rockets have interviewed TNT's Kenny Smith for their head coaching vacancy. Stephen A., could you see this working? Oh, I absolutely could see it working. I would miss Kenny Smith on TNT. I'm actually jealous watching the show because I love it, and I love all of those guys. I've known them for years. They're personal friends of mine. Uh, Kenny Smith uh, is one of the brilliant basketball minds in this business. Uh, he, I'm not saying that just because he's a friend. He's a great, great person. Uh, he's highly knowledgeable. He's a good man. He knows what he's talking about. And more importantly, when you talk about an individual that could successfully go about the business of ingratiating himself with the modern day player to maximize their skill set, I definitely think that Kenny Smith is somebody that can do that very, very successfully. Not to mention the fact that when it comes to Houston, it's even more of a viable option because Kenny Smith comes with credentials, not just because of his years of clear expertise as a basketball analyst. That's unparalleled as far as I'm concerned, by the way, but also because the guy is a two time champion as a point guard for that franchise. If you're Les Alexander and you want somebody that can ingratiate himself with the modern day player, which is James Harden and on top of it all, maximize your potential and make you feel good about it, who can also go out there and recruit other players to want to come and play for you. I don't think there's anybody better for that particular job than Kenny Smith. I hope he gets it if he wants it. But if he doesn't want it, I don't blame him because that TNT set is a <laughs> damn good place to work. No it question. Is. I got you. I'm with you on this. I'm intrigued. I think this could work and work big for, for the city of Houston and for that franchise for all the reasons you just detailed. I look back at the precedent that's set and, and I'm sure there are those out there who would say, come on, Kenny Smith's just going to walk straight out of the broadcasting booth with not one second of paying any dues as an assistant coach and suddenly became a head coach of that franchise in that city? Wow. It's happened, and it's worked. I look back at Doc Rivers, walked out of the TV booth right into Orlando's job. Look at him now. I look at yep. Mark Jackson, walked out of the TV booth into the Warriors' job did really well and, and he's still a viable candidate for the next job opening. he should be the he yeah. should be the head coach for the new okay. york knicks quinn he buckner, should be that yeah. there okay i got you quinn buckner did it well, i was in dallas in those days
came from NBC, went straight to the Mavericks. Wasn't great, but, but he pulled it off and, and was a very smart basketball coach. Doug Collins really pulled it off coming out of the CBS booth to the Bulls with, with the, the Michael Jordan Bulls, obviously, and then went on to, to even bigger fame elsewhere. I, it, it worked. Steve Kerr was a GM in Phoenix for three years, but he had no assistant coaching experience before he yep. took over Golden State. It worked. It just works. When, when you have pedigree in the league as a player, somehow it translates. You don't have to deal with 53 people on a roster as you do in the NFL. You're, you're basically having to deal with six or seven people. And you, it, nobody knows the X's and O's. No analyst on TV, no disrespect to anybody at ESPN, but, but nobody is better than Kenny Smith at doing the X's and O's. He really gets it, and he can talk it, and I'm sure he could teach it. Then it comes down to, can you juggle and handle the superstar egos on your team? And usually there are one he or can. two or three. I think he can. I don't know, would it drive him nuts? Well, it, maybe it would. I, I don't think so. I think he could do it, and I think he'd be a really good choice. That he, He'd actually help sell a few tickets early on. If they didn't win, Listen. it wouldn't work. But, but I'd want to watch Kenny coach as much as I'd want to watch James Harden play. He's the kind, Kenny's an entertainer, man. Yeah, Kenny's a guy yeah. that knows how to ingratiate himself with people in a very pleasant manner. When you're around him, you like being around him. You like talking to him. He's And his basketball knowledge is unquestioned. The guy knows what he's talking about. Yep. And his basketball credentials are that of a two-time champion as a point guard who, by the way, was at the University of North Carolina prior to being in he the was. NBA and becoming the two-time champion. The brother, can he knows the game backwards and forwards, yep. and Houston is where his success as an NBA player occurred. It's a perfect matchup if he wants it. Yeah, I agree. But he would be walking away from hey. TNT. That's a hell of a job. I know. I, you, I, special I, I, show. This is one of the best jobs in television. It is. That's a hard thing to walk away and, from. You know and I know there would be long nights coaching where he would miss that gig at TNT. Hell yes. Yeah. I don't even work there, and I'd miss it. Yep. No, that show's incredible, for sure. Great chemistry. Dwayne Wade, speaking of great chemistry, he has uh, been vintage Wade of late. Will he be able to carry the heat 